Today we're going to be tackling one of the more important sections in the trig uh, unit, and that would be solving trigonometric equations, some by hand, some by calculator. The first ones we're going to be doing is just solving equations using a single trig function, but I just wanted to have you guys keep in mind that solving an equation just means uh, finding all the values for theta or x or whatever the variable is that will satisfy the given equation. So if you get a, uh, a solution, let's say pi over 4, and you're asked, does that, uh, is that a solution to this given equation? Then you just replace theta with pi over 4. Okay, and you ask yourself, well, does this solve the equation? And you have to know your unit circle values really well. Uh, sine of pi over 4, radical 2 over 2. So you just replace that. Radical 2 over 2 plus radical 2. Does that equal 0? And as you can see, radical 2 plus radical 2 is equal to 2 radical 2. And that would be uh, no. Okay, so theta equaling pi over 4 is not a solution to this given equation. Okay because it doesn't make the equation true. That's the whole idea. It's the same idea as we've talked about all along. If a, a value, a real number, is a solution, then it will make the equation true. Okay, so you can see that this particular one does not. If we replace, though, theta with 5 pi over 4, then we do the same thing. We replace the theta in this given equation. It has to be the initial equation, okay, or the original equation. And when we replace theta with 5 pi over 4, we know that the sine of 5 pi over 4, if you uh, look at a unit circle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4 is over here. The sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants, and the sine would be negative radical 2 over 2. So we substitute negative radical 2 over 2 for the sine of 5 pi over 4. And it looks like this will work. When we cancel the 2's, we get negative radical 2 plus positive radical 2, and that is 0 equals 0. So that would be a yes. Uh, yes, meaning that 5 pi over 4 is, in fact, the solution to that given equation. Okay. So for the rest of these, the, um, the rest of these examples, I'm going to show you how to actually take the equation and solve for the given variable. Okay, so we're going to start with this an equation already, a solution already worked out. And we've actually already done some of this before in class, so this isn't totally new. Here's the initial equation, and sometimes you're asked to solve the equation just between 0 and 2 pi. Other times you're asked to find um, all the solutions. And so this one says we're supposed to give a general formula for all the solutions, and then list eight of them. So we have done a bit of this, and so this is a good review. When you add radical 3 to both sides of this original equation and then divide by 2, you get, uh, you get this equation here. Cosine of theta is equal to radical 3 over 2. Okay, so the question you want to ask yourself is, where is the cosine of theta equal to three, radical 3 over 2? And on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so there's two answers. One, and I like to show it using a unit circle. Okay. So we know that the cosine is bigger towards the x-axis. Okay, so right here and right here is where the cosine is radical 3 over 2. So this is the pi over 6 and this is the 11 pi over 6. So the cosine of both of these angles is equal to radical 3 over 2. So theta then would be equal to pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Okay, quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So the general formula, and this is I think part of the new part, uh, the, the new stuff that you haven't seen before. You have seen this. Every time you go one full revolution around the circle, you get back to the original uh, angle. So when you take pi over 6 and you add 2 pi, you get back here, and then you add 2 pi again, add 2 pi again, you keep adding 2 pi, you get back to that same angle. And so then the cosine of that same angle, no matter if you call it uh, pi over 6 or 13 pi over 6 or 
uh, what would that be? So you have uh, pi over 6 here, so you have 2 pi, 12 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6, and you get 24, 25 pi over 6, and so forth. The cosine of the angle is always radical 3 over 2. So you have to include all of those, and all you have to do is, remember, add that 2k pi to that angle. So you're adding 2 pi to the angle, and that k would be k is an integer. All right. So we have the k. That didn't look like a k. Okay. There, now it looks like a bold k. Okay. So then uh, we have that angle, pi over 6 plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi, and that, that when we keep adding the same thing, we just stick a k in there, k going from uh, negative infinity to positive infinity, counting by 1. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. Okay? And then we have 11 pi over 6 plus 2 k pi, same reasoning why we add the 2 k pi, and uh, it's amazing how how often, as soon as you see a K, as soon as students see a K, they start thinking, oh, this is way too hard. Uh, just give it time. If you haven't figured it out already, uh, take your time and try to understand, maybe list out. This is why the eight solutions here are listed out so you can kind of understand why uh, that 2K pi is in there. But if K is negative 1, oh, there, K, there we go. So K is negative 1. It's really hard to see. When k is negative 1, you get these two angles. When k is equal to 0, we get the original two angles. k is equal to 1, we get these two. When k is equal to 2, we get these two. Now, this is only 8 of the infinite number of solutions, but it hopefully gives you a clear idea of why, um, of what that k and how that k changing affects the, the solutions that we get. Okay? So, uh, hopefully that makes sense. And... We'll go on to the next example. This one. Solving this equation here. Uh, you know, I'd like you to do one on your own, but I'll wait till the end on that. So I'm going to give you all the examples, and then I'm going to give you some practice problems. So this example here, notice that we've got something different here. We've got a double angle. Okay, so it's going to add a little bit of something to this. And again, we've talked a little bit about this, and this will help you uh, kind of reinforce what you've already learned. So again, we're solving an equation uh, involving just one trig function, and we're going to solve this one only from 0 to 2 pi, including 0, but not including 2 pi. Okay, Adding 1 and dividing by 2 gives us this equation here. And... We know that the cosine, see here's the deal, on the interval 0 to 2 pi, the cosine of an angle is 1 half when the angle is pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. So again, if you look back at the unit circle, we have the cosine of something, okay, equaling 1 half. Well, remember the cosine is 1 half away from the x-axis up here and down here at the angles described, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, okay? So... That's great. Well, we know that two pi, uh, sorry, two theta is equal to pi over three because that's the angle. The cosine of the angle is one half, so that angle, whatever it is, has to be pi over three, or that angle has to be five pi over three. Okay, and this is where we have to solve for theta because solving in the equation, if you just take a step back here, look at this, solve the equation. This implies we're solving the equation for theta. We're not solving the equation for 2 theta. We're solving the equation for theta. Okay? Well, when we get 2 theta then is equal to pi over 3, we have to divide by 2, and I'm trying to read this at the same time. Uh, but since we divide by 2, adding 2 pi to the angle will still give us a solution for theta that falls in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, I actually like to write it, I don't necessarily like to split it up like this. What I like to do is this. 2 theta is equal to, let's do this down here, pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So instead of having to remember uh, kind of a formula, just list out a bunch. When you get a double angle or a triple angle or any anything but just the angle, list the first few 
um, not just first few, but like first four, six, eight, whatever angles, that um, the cosine of these angles would be equal to one half. So if you look at the pi over three, five pi over three, six, seven pi over three would be seven pi over three. Okay, so I, you notice that they're adding 2 pi, adding 2 pi to these angles in here. Well, I'm adding 2 pi also, but I'm just, instead of writing it as pi over 3 plus 2 pi, I'm just writing it as 7 pi over 3. So this guy right here, pi over 3 plus 2 pi, is the same as what I wrote, 7 pi over 3. I just would rather look at the unit circle rather than have to do some more calculating like this without understanding why this is true. Okay, so I think this promotes a little bit better understanding, but if you like this better, go ahead. Okay, well what would be the next angle measure that we would get? I gotta keep hitting these two big black dots. I guess they're not black, they're uh, purple. But anyway, we have 1 to pi over 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pi over 3. I would keep going, 12, 13 pi over 3 because this will show you something, 14, 15, 16, 17 pi over 3. And if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm counting by, by uh, 1 third pi. So 1 third pi, 2 thirds pi, 3 thirds pi. So 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3. So you should be familiar with how we count our way around the unit circle by now. Okay. But again, you've seen this part. Okay. We have 2 pi equaling all these, sorry, 2 theta equaling all of these angles. And we're going to divide by 2, or we can think of this as multiplying every one of these angle measures by 1 half. And we just have to keep listing them until we get past 2 pi. Because remember, we're only allowed to find theta angles, angles of theta, that will uh, be between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so let's start listing them. We've got uh, 1 half times pi over 3, that's pi over 6. Then we have 5 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. So here we are just about around the unit circle because we know what these ang where these angles are. 1 pi over 6, 5, 7, 11. And then if we try to do 13 pi over 6, we are 1 pi over 6 past 2 pi. So we can't use that and we can't use any more. Okay, so these are the four angle measures which you can clearly see right here. So just another way of arriving at the same exact answer. Okay, might be all I have time for in this video, so I'll pick up the next couple uh, examples in the next video. So we'll see you then.